VR Worlds is a game developed by London Studio that combines five unique VR experiences into one game. The London Heist, Scavenger's Odyssey, VR Luge, Danger Bowl, and Ocean Descent. Joanna Orland, our supervising sound designer, worked really, really closely with the development team to talk about and define an overall aesthetic for the audio experience in the game. The main challenge for us in working with VR as a medium was that we were in uncharted territory. There was no how-to manual uh, for audio, so we really had to start from scratch. One of the stumbling blocks that we came across was uh, we needed to implement a sort of a 3D audio system, and that's a sort of a very different way of processing and delivering sound. Normally you would use a traditional sort of 5.1 or 7.1 speaker-based setup, but now we needed to do that just via the medium of headphones, which just has two channels. But the fact that the VR headset gave us head tracking capabilities was a massive advantage. It actually allowed us to implement a stronger uh, sense of 3D audio and immersion to the player through a custom audio system, which allowed us to spatialize sound coming from any point in space from around the listener and also react to how the user has orientated their head. We did a lot of experimentation to how music should work in VR. Should the speakers be placed in the environment so as you move your head they stay in the same place? Or should they kind of be stuck to your head as if you're wearing headphones in that environment um, and as you move around the music would follow you? In most of the game we use quad music, so music that's positioned in quad so you've got two speakers in front of you and two speakers behind you. And then we use a degree of spread which basically sends a small amount of those speaker signals to neighbouring speakers around it. And what this does is it gives a broad positionality to the speakers and it gives a little bit of movement so as you move your head you get this kind of musical parallax which kind of embeds the music into the environment and makes it feel a lot more as if it's part of the world. One of the really important things about VR is how you ground the player in that space. And so one of the things that we did for Ocean Descent is that we added some avatar movement sounds to the player. Every time the player moves their head around in that space, they hear the sound of them moving their head through water. That really goes a long way to helping the player feel like they're really grounded in that space. With the focus system, what we're doing is kind of emulating this effect called the cocktail party effect. If you focus on the turtle for a few seconds, suddenly his sounds will come to the forefront of the mix. The background sounds, the ambience, everything will be suppressed very subtly. Once you lose focus, you look away from him, the mix kind of adjusts itself back to normal again. Another cool thing about Ocean Descent is, specifically in the Jellyfish Cave, we have the ambient music kind of being played back in 2D, and then as you start to look around, these jellyfish start to appear. And if you look at these jellyfish, they'll light up and emit a tone. And that tone will be in the same key as the 2D music, but it'll be positional in space. So as you start looking around and more of these jellyfish light up, it starts to create this soundscape that evolves around you um, in 360 degrees. In the London Heights title sequence, we're transitioning from abstract title music, which is setting the scene, into this piece of music that's actually being played in the real world. And that's one of the really nice things that we can do in binaural, because we can actually move music in that space. So you can really feel the music that's kind of sitting around you, and then it's kind of disappearing downstairs into this space. The player now has more control, and, and it's able to interact a lot more with the environment. The way they interact with objects is different from a traditional game where you might have fixed animations for um, grabbing an object or throwing it, but in this one you can kind of do it at your own speed. So in one scene where we have a cigar you can grab, and when the player sort of puts a cigar to his mouth uh, and you light it, and then we use the uh, built-in microphone in the VR headset to sort of detect when the player is making the noise for inhaling and exhaling. To make these environments believable, it was very important how we play back some of these Foley elements and sound of characters. For that, we basically developed this in-house dynamic reverb. Dynamic reverb is where we calculate the reflections of the sound on the walls and the environment which are around the sound and the listener. The sound source will detect the environment around it, what materials are used, and it will try and render those reflections. And it's something that the brain constantly measures. It gives a sense of proximity, a sense of distance, and it also makes it sound like 
you know, that sound is coming from that space. In one of the scenes in the London Heist, um, you're driving in a van down a highway in London, and in that van you can interact with a lot of different objects, and one of them is you can open the door, and of course, we're expecting the players to try and lean out. We detected whether your head was outside of the van, and if it was, we changed the mix, we start playing some really heavy wind sound. If you turn your head to one side, you might have more wind, more pressure on one ear, to the other side, you have more on the other ear. In action-heavy cues, we would often send the music straight to your ears to move it out of the way of the soundscape. So in the London Heist, for example, as you're zooming down the road and these gangsters could start coming up on either side of you in their motorbikes, the music goes to 2D and kind of scores the tension and action of the scene that gets out of the way as these motorbikes zoom around you and allows them to stay positional in the world. We've definitely done a lot of contrast and differences for the sound uh, of the spaces within Scavengers. The way the ambiences have been made, there is no background kind of static ambience. It's always evolving, morphing and even surprising. So you cannot really predict what's going to happen and by doing so it kind of gives a lot of depth to the atmosphere of the game. The people that are playing VR, even if they are not audio specialists, they have really high expectations because during their entire life they've been experiencing 360 audio every day. In VR, because you're actually in that space, all of the sound for that cutscene has to come from the world. The average number of sound emitters that we have in Scavengers is around 600, whereas in the non-VR game you can probably get by with something like 200. The hub is the glue between everything. It holds everything together. It's the menu system of the game. It's sort of in an interesting space. It's a recognizable environment, and then it has this magical or abstract orb in front of you. Because the hub is the first thing that players are going to experience uh, in VR worlds, we knew we really wanted to make that space feel very detailed and very tactile. It's really important for us to make sure that everything the player does has some reaction with the audio as well. You might sort of stick your head inside the orb. That really has to feel fantastic and feel surprising, but it has to have some kind of reaction. We thought we could control some of those interactions through the microphone. You can lean into some of the rocks which are orbiting around the little planet and use the microphone and shout at them and it would scatter them away. The nice thing about the hub is, as you move between the different experiences, you get different elements of the audio and music coming out within that experience. So you get the main game theme, and then as you go into each of the experiences, different layers will enter the music and you'll start to hear how that theme is approached for each of the different styles. So in Dangerable, for example, you get the more electronic elements coming out and in London Heist, you get the more band, like the guitars and drums start coming in. Obviously, I'm really, really proud of the end result. I'm really, really proud of what the team produced. But really, what I'm most proud of is how we went about the challenge. It was quite a feat, not just on the creative, but also on the production and the systems of the game to bring all that together. Every day, the sound and the music teams would be talking about what was happening in the game. Really, it would have been easy to, to play it safe, but the audio team wanted to be at the forefront of, of audio for VR. I think something we can be really proud of is how unnoticeable the complex technology is. We were tearing up the rule book, we were writing new ones. People come up to you and they have big bright eyes and they want to know what you've done because they've never heard of it before. It's great to feel like you're a pioneer. players.